It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now, here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. Well, hello there. It's Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor, back with you. And we're ready for what? Another dynamic fourth quarter. If you love the stock market the way that I love the stock market, you know what's coming up. September, October, November, December, high, high volatility. So let me just explain this to you, because this is where traders make a lot of money in the last 15 weeks of the year. And it's all due to something you've heard me talk about called window dressing. So let me explain. So we have our favorite stocks like Apple, for example, Home Depot, Lowe's, right? They're all rising. But what happens is, in the fourth quarter, there's a little something called window dressing. Now, if you're into mutual funds and you get a statement, for example, at the end of the year in your mutual fund, that fund is required to tell you what their top 10 or top 100 holdings are. So... What most people don't know is at the end of the year, the fund manager will buy very large amounts of Dow stocks that are in favor. So when the consumer opens their statement at the end of the year, they think to themselves, I'll keep my money in this fund. Look at all the great companies that they own. And all of those companies mysteriously have gone up in value over the last year. Well, it depends on when you've owned those stocks. So your mutual fund manager knows they have to dress up the fund, window dressing like a department store, and buy inordinate amounts of the stocks that have done well throughout the year. Did you know that? Most people don't. This is sometimes referred to as the fleecing of the American investor. Why? Because there's some gains that go on at the end of the year that inflate the price of stocks, and all of this buying and selling causes your favorite thing, which is volatility. So let's just have a brief uh, discussion about volatility. What is volatility? Well, during the trading day, stock prices don't remain stationary. They actually move up and down. They fluctuate, right? That fluctuation is called volatility. Now, there are some stocks that have a price range every day of 50 cents. They move 50 cents up and down. There are some stocks that have a price range intraday during the day for $5. Now, could you imagine if you were a volatility trader, someone who made their money off of all that price action, how much money you can actually earn when your favorite stock goes up a dollar, down a dollar, up a dollar, down a dollar? For many of my students outside of covered calls, this is their secondary trade. Why? If I see that XYZ stock is moving $5 a day, and the day before the market closes and I buy 100 shares and I tell the software inside my trading account, sell those 100 shares when the stock goes up a dollar from where I bought it, am I going to make money? Yes, because this is a trade that is programmable. You see, I don't have to sit at the computer all day and wait for a stock to move up a dollar. The software will sell it when I follow the instructions and put them into my account. They'll just sell those shares. So if I get really good at volatility, I can make at least $100 a day buying and selling my favorite Dow stock. Do you get it? Well, if I'm willing to sell my shares in a $1 move and I have 1,000 shares, I'm earning $1,000 a day as a volatility trader. Well, why is this such a big deal, Tyrone? Well, because institutions buy millions of shares. And every time that stock price rises a dollar, the software sells their shares and they make a million dollars a day. By the way, how many times on this show if I said to you, open your mind, keep an open mind, because the amount of money made on Wall Street is not like any other business? Obviously, if there are hedge funds that earn a million dollars a day trading, that's $5 million a week, some of these funds from Dubai, for example, can make $50 million a day. Why? Because of the size of their block trades. You see, there's a lot that goes on in the world of wealth that you might not be thinking about on a regular basis, but it's still very real. And by the way, 
those to buy hedge funds making $50 million a day, they don't pay any U.S. taxes, but they're participating in the U.S. stock market. So when you see all of these lifestyles uh, of the rich and famous uh, and people making extraordinary money, a lot of that money is coming from the U.S. stock market, from institutions that are trading in our market around the world. Okay, so the U.S. stock market is a very unique entity because billions of dollars per second is traded on the exchanges here in the United States. But if you don't have that financial education or you didn't make friends with the wealthy investor himself, you simply wouldn't know that. Okay, so in the fourth quarter, with all this window dressing uh, going on around the world, but particularly focused on mutual funds, there's a lot of volatility. So for some of us, whatever we're doing in our lives, those of us who love trading, we know to be prepared for the fourth quarter. I will just say uh, this for those of you who are a little bit more advanced. If there's volatility in a stock that's moving 2 to $5 a day, obviously there's volatility in the Delta 50 leaps option. Hello? So you can get paid twice off the volatility trade, which is what I like and which is what I teach in my online courses. And by the way, we do have another fourth quarter volatility trading course coming up uh, in about the next six weeks. So make sure if you haven't signed up for the Wealthy Investor free email list, you do so because you want to be in on that course. And that's where I show you the stocks that are the most volatile, but that also pay a dividend. So therefore, you're balancing out your risk. But today's show is all about cornering the market. Now, there's some terms that I hear people say when they're introduced to the stock market, and uh, I never recommend that you use these terms. Number one, I have a feeling this stock is going higher. Are you kidding me? You bought a thousand shares of something, and you're going to go now and let your feelings dictate how you trade a stock? No, that's crazy. You don't let your feelings run your life. Emotions and feelings have a place. If you know anything about spirituality, you know about something called the mind-body balance or mind-emotional balance, where you really want to balance between everything. You don't want to be all in your head because that makes you too logical, and you don't want to be all emotions because that makes you too emotional. So your emotions can lead you in a good or bad direction. So can your logic. So we follow stocks in the Wealthy Investor Program that what? Have strong fundamentals and are in strong five-year trends. That way you don't have to rely on your feelings to make a trading decision. So uh, this idea that I have a feeling the stock is going to turn around, that's for TV shows. You see that on TV shows. By the way, if you ever watch a good cop movie, the guy who's the hero and the cop goes, Sarge, you got to trust me. I have a feeling uh, about how we can catch this perpetrator. That's in the movies. You don't do that in real life. Don't do it in the stock market. And the other phrase, when someone invests in a company, they say, Tyrone, you don't understand the stock is going higher because they're going to corner the market on something. Let me explain to you how Wall Street works. There's no such thing as cornering the market on anything. If there's money to be made, the best thing that a company can do is get market share market share. There's no company that own, is that is the only one that provides the singular product or service. Because in that sector of the marketplace, if there are billions to be made, Wall Street simply raises capital, starts another company, finances another company, and they will chase that same market. So there's no one cornering the market. There are companies that have 80% share of a particular market or 50% share of a particular market. Can you guess the name of one company that has 80 to 70% share of a particular market? Well, I'll talk about that company right after this. Want to increase your stock market trading profits? Then you need to start your monthly membership to WITradeSchool.com right now. Don't understand how to write covered calls for monthly income? No problem. Simply review Tyrone's latest stock trades in our video library as many times as you need. WITradeSchool.com is all about helping you get the financial education you need to earn money in the stock market and change your financial life. 
Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor, has helped his students earn thousands of dollars per month trading stocks online from home. These are people just like you. So what are you waiting for? Follow Tyrone Jackson's Red Hot Stock Trades and Investment Strategies today. Don't wait. Start your monthly membership at WITradeschool.com right now. No such thing as cornering a market. That's what we're talking about here on the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Hey, by the way, if this podcast helps you, uh, share it with someone. Share it on social media. Share it on Facebook. Let people know about it. Why? Because if more people had a financial education in the United States, we could eradicate poverty. But guess what? It's not very popular to talk about wealth and wealth building in certain circles. Therefore, people don't know that they can earn residual income from the stock market. And that's what I'm here to help you do. To elevate your thoughts, your expectations about money, and create residual income from the stock market. For how long? For the rest of your life. Very exciting. Okay, back to today's show, the idea of cornering a market. And I was going to give you an example of a company that's has a strong market share. So let that go from your mind. There's no company that corners the market, but there are companies that have a significant amount of market share. I'll give you a couple of them right now. Home Depot, publicly traded, ticker symbol HD, and Lowe's. They're in a new segment of the economy that have been birthed over the last 30 years called the home improvement space. So before Home Depot and before Lowe's, People would go to their local hardware store and mostly buy tools. You had to be a sophisticated contractor to know where to go to buy sheetrock, tools, uh, roofing, plumbing equipment. That was just invented 30 years ago, 20 to 30 years ago, when these two companies came on the scene. Well, do Home Depot and Lowe's have a corner on the home improvement space? No, because there are many local hardware stores that service a community, uh, but they're not publicly traded. One of the companies in the home improvement space that you may have heard of is a company called Ace, Ace Hardware, right? They're not as big as Home Depot and Lowe's, but they get their share of the home improvement market because they're a smaller company that focuses on local stores and rural areas where Home Depot and Lowe's are not present. Why? Because maybe in that local market, it's only a $50 million market, right? Whereas if you're in Los Angeles or San Francisco, those market sizes in terms of their earning potential are much greater. Do you get it? So Lowe's and Home Depot have, let's say, 80% market share, but they don't have 100%. Therefore, they could never corner the market. But what they have generates billions and billions of dollars per quarter on the top line for these companies. And that's why both of those stocks have doubled, gone up 100% in the last five years. See, understanding market share is an important concept when you're talking about investing in a company. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more risky and a little bit more confusing. Now, on the technology side, here's where it gets a little bit more confusing because a company with its software offerings can have 50, 60, 70% share of a market, and then another company can take over that marketplace because they've improved on their software product. So in the uh, software space, a leader today doesn't mean that they're a leader tomorrow. So, for example, you may have heard of a company started by a guy named Bill Gates called Microsoft. MSFT is the ticker symbol. They're a member of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. They dominated the market when it came to operating systems 20 years ago. They still have a strong foothold in that market, but they realized rather than just being in the operating system business, the cloud was the future. Data storage, functionality, database storage, all of that. So Microsoft pursued the cloud business, and they're a leader there. They also realized that gaming was a huge sector, and because they're buying power and the power of their brand, They couldn't corner the market, but they can get a significant amount of market share. So that's why Microsoft stock has done well and will continue to do well, because they're looking out for emerging spaces 
in the marketplace as it relates to technology. And if they can't be the leader, they will simply buy other companies. This is known as non-organic revenue growth. And that purchase of those other companies maintains a superior position for them. Okay, So I think Microsoft will continue to do well simply because if they can't, you know, grow the technology, you simply buy the company that can. So all of this talk right now in the marketplace about the cloud, who's going to be the leader, it's going to be Microsoft, because if they don't develop the technology, they will buy the company that has the capability. Okay. Now, when you think about a leader in the retail space, who's the biggest e-commerce retailer in the world? It is Amazon.com, A-M-Z-N. Because Amazon, as some of you remember, started out selling used books, correct? Right. And then they realized they could be ubiquitous if they did what? If they diversified what they sold. So now they sell everything from shaving cream to hair care products to tanning products to home goods, right? You can buy it all on Amazon. But most of what you buy on Amazon is supplied by what they call a third party someone else is selling their stuff on Amazon? Yes, and then Amazon takes a piece of every sale. That's why they've grown so much. Amazon, are they cornering the market on e-tailing? Not at all. There are a bunch of other companies out there that allow, what, consumers to purchase from them all sorts of things. In my view, one of their biggest competitors is a company called Shopify which is also publicly traded, but less well-known. Shopify allows people like you and I to set up a mini Amazon, basically drive traffic to it and get sales. So we would brand that um, our retail store, and as long as we can buy ads on maybe local television, radio, Facebook, TikTok, right? People can come to our store and... Uh, make money. We make money from all of the product sales. Now, where are we getting the products? Well, there's another company that shakes hands with Shopify to get the products, uh, but you can list those products on your website. So it's basically allowing you to build a small Amazon.com. Uh, and there are two ways to make money in that space. I don't want to go too deep into it, but there's a general store where you can purchase iPhone supplies and technology, or you can specialize in a niche like women's hair care products and beauty products just for women. That works because the consumer doesn't mind going to a brand name that's not Amazon because the store specializes in one area. So you know how you see these kids on TikTok and uh, on YouTube getting rich? Guess what? Many of them own these Shopify stores, right? And they build up followers by posting videos And no joke, this really is true. Some of them are making millions convincing their audience to buy a hairbrush or candles from their website, whatever it is, right? So Amazon is not cornering the market on anything. They may have what we call top-of-the-mind recognition, but hundreds of millions of dollars are being made by smaller e-tailers. They call them e-tailers instead of retailers. So this e-tail space is huge and people are quitting their jobs because of why should you have a job if you can make $100,000 a month off a store that you own that is virtual and you can sell products around the world. This is the revolution that we're experiencing now in our economy. Is so many people are developing financial freedom off of all sorts of avenues that are digital. So it'd be very difficult for Amazon to corner the market on anything. But what they can do is keep top of the mind recognition. And one of the ways that they keep you glued, they call it stickiness in the digital world, is by giving you free programming, something called Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime uh, allows you to order products at a faster rate and at a discount, and they give you a streaming service connected to it. Now, I'm not being sinister here. You heard me talk about many times on this show, co-relationships. What was initially discussed at Amazon 
was they would embed products in their favorite shows or shows that you would watch, and then you would then find out that you could order uh, the baking set that you saw Jennifer Aniston (laughs) using during an episode of a show that she's on, but you would see those products. You'd be one click. You'd buy the products you saw in the show, and it would have a positive impact on Amazon sales. Now, I don't know where that plan kind of uh, fell off, but uh, it didn't take off, and we're seeing less product placement in these shows on Amazon Prime. But uh, that was the talk at one time, get people to buy more product, by embedded products in entertainment shows, because, well, Amazon had the network, right? All right. So what is the lesson of today as you reflect on today's shows? There's no such thing as cornering the market. What you and I can do is own companies that have significant market share in a particular space like home improvement, software, gaming, et cetera, right? So when you understand who has the largest market share and who's generating the largest amount from revenue, you are halfway home to picking stocks that are winners. Now, if you really want to pick winning stocks and you want to see the stocks that I choose and this list changes all the time, then you want to go to WI Trade School and start your membership. It's easy. It's kind of like Netflix for stock market traders. And every week I upload uh, an additional video explaining to you the story of the week. And guess what I just did in WI Trade School? I put together a video lesson this week that was on uh, stocks that were um, gaining market share. And so I walk you through them, you look at the charts, I show you where the money is. So now is the time for you to take action and start uh, trading or building your portfolio profits in the fourth quarter. Very exciting time. I'm excited that we had this time together and that you learned a little something as you do with every episode here of Trading Stocks Made Easy. I'm Tyrone Jackson, The Wealthy Investor, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll automatically receive our next episode. 